Welcome to the Sophistic Online Documentation. In this video of the Composite Bridge tutorial, we show how to calculate stress ranges for the fatigue design checks. Before we start with the input, some notes about the concept for calculating stress ranges that we present here. The stress ranges in, in the Composite section are calculated from the maximum and minimum forces and moments that occur during the passage of the fatigue load model over the bridge. However, this action is not the only relevant one for calculating the stress ranges in the section, because for calculating the effects of the loads from the fatigue load model, it is important if the composite section is correct or uncorrect. To judge this, the typical load level on the bridge during the passage of the fatigue load model is relevant. According to Eurocode, this load level from so-called non-cyclic actions should typically be assumed to be the frequent combination of permanent loads, settlements and temperature loads combined to give the most unfavorable effect on the stress range. In our case, we get this by combining the non-cyclic actions to give the minimum bending moment MY, because this gives the highest chance that the concrete in the cross section is in tension, therefore assumed to be correct, so giving the least sectional resistance. Okay, now before calculating the fatigue loads, we will create this base combination of non-cyclic actions. For this, we first create an action to store and reference the created results later on. Do this in the Action Manager. Define a user defined action, which I will call the FAT or base combination fatigue. This action should not produce stress ranges, so make sure to set it to be treated as permanent in the superposition and set the safety and combinations factors to 1.0. Okay, now let's create the corresponding combination. I will add a text task for this. and paste the corresponding input. You should already be familiar with the concept. We define first the combination. Here we would like to have the combination to be done as frequent combination. And we assign the previously defined action to the result load cases that will be created. And then we define the results to be created by the superposition and specify the actions to be used in the combination. So all permanent actions and temperature and settlement loads. Then we define the results to be created by the superposition. As noted, we would like to get a superposition for the minimum bending moment MY. The results should be stored in this load case here. Okay, that's fine. Now, the next step will be to calculate internal forces and moments due to the fatigue load model. As for the other traffic loads, we specify an action to define how the created result load cases should be treated in combinations. Here we can use the predefined action path for fatigue traffic loading. Okay, please edit. Okay, having defined this, we next calculate the internal forces due to the fatigue load model with the traffic loader. So open the traffic loader, please add the corresponding fatigue load model to the load trains for the analysis. So here FLM3. Okay, and then add a new load group for the calculation of the fatigue load model. Remember here to assign the corresponding action. Base load case number here will be 300. And also we'll give a title here. Okay, then create two cases. So for the load position in cross direction, one for the right alignment of the lane. And the second one for the left alignment. 
Okay, then we can once again run the task and take a look at the created results for the beam elements. Please remember that we need this results also on the design element. So we have to map the corresponding load cases on the design element. So here we will add the line with load cases 301 to 312 and run it. Okay, now you will find these results also on the design element. Okay, now we have the results from the fatigue load model available and also the base combination for non-cyclic loads. And can define the combination for the design load cases that we use for the calculation of stress ranges. I will paste the input that I prepared for that purpose. So here we apply two actions. First, the non-cyclic one and then the cyclic one, so the fatigue loading. And concerning the created load cases for our simple system, we are interested in a superposition for the maximum and minimum bending moment MY and the shear force we set. Okay, let's run the superpositioning. And in the next step, we can use the created load cases to calculate the stress ranges. I will add a new text task for this. And paste the prepared input for module composite. Here we use now the task type fatigue for fatigue. And we insert the previously created load cases that will give the maximum and minimum stresses for the stress range. And furthermore, we have to specify a load case where we want to store then the calculated stress ranges. Here, we will use the load case number 3910. Okay, let's run the task and take a look at the results. For each material, we get the maximum stress range for axial and shear stress at the decisive position in the section, and this for every section along the girder, as you can see. And usually more important, we also get the maximum stress ranges in each of the stress points defined in the section. We can use the stress ranges then to proceed with the fatigue design checks. For example, also listing them in the result viewer. For example, filter for one of the stress points. Note that when you request a detail at the selected section, you will get plotted the stress range from min to max in green. For, for example, for the shear stress min, here is max and this is the range. And if you have requested, as we did here, the echo level full, then you will also get not only the stress range for the load codes where these results are stored, but also for each of the constituting load cases that have been investigated for these stress ranges, the contributing sub-load cases, 
and the plot of the stresses for this individual load case. Please note also that we consider tension stiffening when calculating the stress ranges for the fatigue design checks. For more information, please also take a look at the manual of module composite and note that you can also control and deselect the treatment of tension stiffening with the input at the input command TS. Okay. One more note, if you want to check more in detail how the stress ranges have been calculated, then you can extend the echo level to extreme. In this case, we will, for each of the investigated load cases leading to the stress range, get the full information about the stress calculation, including the development of the stresses in the construction process and so on. Okay, that's it about calculating stress ranges for the fatigue design checks. Now you have seen all the tools that we currently provide in our new workflow for the design of composite girders. I hope you will find them useful and enjoy trying them out.